Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to knit the two color brioche hat. I've previously posted videos on the one color um, brioche hat, actually two videos, but I've given you the link to the more recent uh, reboot one color brioche hat video. And um, the reason is because um, some of the pattern from that video will be repeated for this one, especially towards the end, the decreases. So I'm not gonna demonstrate that part in this video, but I'm gonna show you how to get started. And then in combination with that video, you'll be able to um, you'll be able to finish up your hat. So knitting the two color brioche hat is actually a lot more easier than doing a two color brioche in the flat. When you do a two color brioche um, in, in just a flat version, then you have to have double pointed needles and um, it's a four row repeat. Whereas here, it's really not. Once you get the setup part done, it's really just a, a, a two row repeat and you just keep alternating colors. So I think knitting two color brioche in the round is much easier than knitting it in the flat. And I have some examples here of some hats that I've knit up and just wanted to show you that the top part of the hat looks really pretty, the decreases, um, the way I have them, I think I think they work, um, they work really well and they look really neat. And the best part is they look really good from both sides. So brioche uh, being a stitch that's completely reversible, um, if you make a hat like this, then you could really wear it on, on either side. And I have here a couple that I made. Um, I cast on 64 stitches for this one, 72 stitches for this one. And they're a bit on the looser side, so they're a relaxed fit. If you want a tighter fit, then you have two options. Either decrease the number of stitches or um, use a, a smaller needle size. A, a needle size that's a few numbers down or, or whatever. It's a smaller needle size, so you'll get a, um, a little bit of a tighter tighter hat but it's it's a wonderful warm hat and very comfy very cozy very soft and so let me show you how it's knit up now for this sample here um, for this demonstration I'm going to use these two colors so what you want to do is with your two colors designate one color as the main color and then the other color as a contrasting color and whatever you decide is your is is going to be your main color that color will make the ridges and then the contrasting color will make the one in the uh, the the stitch in between the ridges now that's one side of course um you can flip it and then it'll be the reverse so regardless of which one you decide as long as you designate one as main color one is contrasting and just stick to that for the entire pattern so you want to cast on now you do need a, a hat needle circular needle 16 inches to be able to knit a hat now if you use bulkier yarn and you don't quite have enough stitches to to form the the comfortably form around a 16 inch circular needle you could use double pointed needles um three double pointed needles and then use use that to make the hat. Given that the brioche hat has a lot of stretch, um, if you want a snugger fit, then you might want to cast on fewer stitches than what's what's in the pattern. Okay, so I have cast on, you do need an even number of stitches, so let me just cast on a few more. I've cast on 60, I believe. Let me do a few more. And I'm just using a long tail cast on here. Uh, we'll do two more. Okay, so once you've cast on the stitches with your main color, you want to use a stitch marker, something like this clippy marker or a round stitch marker, and put that in here so that you know where the join is is, um, is going to happen. And you want to make sure that all of your stitches are facing the same side so your work isn't twisted. And now we're ready to join. So we're going to have two setup rows in this one. I'm going to have the first row in the main color, and then I'm going to do a second setup row in the contrasting color. So with this same color, you're going to go ahead and knit the first stitch. Then you're going to bring the yarn to the front and then you're going to slip the next stitch. And that's going to be the pattern repeat for the whole row. Now, when you knit the next stitch, make sure the yarn stays in the front because we want that yarn to go over like this. So we're going to knit the next stitch, bring the yarn to the front, slip the next stitch. And when you slip the next stitch, you're just inserting as if to purl and slipping. So what happens here is as we're doing this setup row, the first setup row, we're creating the brioche stitch. So each, every other stitch is going to be a regular stitch and then a brioche stitch, which is these two, these two um, loops together. Okay. So we're just going to keep doing this all the way around 
till we get to the other end. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I will meet you up when um, I'm close to the end of this first setup row. So now I'm nearing the end of that first setup row that I've been doing with my main color. And the last two stitches are going to be the same thing. Repeat a knit one, yarn to the front, and then slip one. And when you slip this last stitch, take your yarn and loop it all the way across and leave it that way. Okay, now you're going to slip the stitch marker and you're getting and you get ready to join your second yarn, your contrasting color. And I'm using this little purple color here uh, or deep lavender. All right, so this first yarn stays in the front like that. Take your second yarn, hold it towards the back of the work and leave about a four to six inch tail and bring the yarn to the front. Okay, because now we're going to do the second setup row. And for that, we're going to slip the first stitch, just like that, purlwise. We're going to take this yarn and loop it all the way around that stitch. Okay, so bringing the yarn forward by looping it all the way around. Now we come to that brioche stitch. You'll see it's the stitch with those two loops. We're going to purl that stitch, what's called a brioche purl. So we're going to insert into both loops as if to purl and purl and drop that. So in brioche, that double stitch, that brioche stitch is considered to be one stitch. And that's your repeat throughout the, the row. So after you've done that brioche purl, your yarn is in the front. So you leave it in the front, you slip the stitch, bring the yarn all the way around, all the way over and burp or BRP or brioche purl. Okay. So you're just going to keep doing that all the way to the end of the row. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back up when I'm towards the, the end of that second setup row. So now I'm nearing the end of that first or second setup row and the last two stitches, the same thing, um, slip, yarn over, and now we're gonna do that last brioche purl. And it might seem a little bit funny because we have that yarn just hanging about like that but that's okay, go ahead and purl it or burp it and then release. And when you release, what'll happen is you'll see that this yarn just kind of comes out and hangs like that and that's fine. That's, we're gonna get, do the next um, row with this yarn, so just let that be, leave it. And that's it, that's the end of the second setup row. So now we're ready to start the two row repeats. And in brioche, um, the two color brioche round every row or every other row will be in these two alternating colors. So row one in the main color, row two in the contrasting color, and you'll just keep repeating those. So for row one, we get back to the main color. So I'm going to take the main color and you want to take it to the back. Okay. Now you'll notice that the very first stitch here is a brioche stitch. It's a, it's the, the two loop stitch. And now it's actually really clear because you can see that of those two loops, one color is the main color and one color is the contrasting color. And the one other point I wanted to show you here is that this yarn is just going to be loose like that because that was where we had joined the yarn. Um, if it falls off like that and it no longer looks like a brioche stitch, just make sure you bring it back over so it looks like a brioche stitch. So now we're gonna take our, for row one, our main color, and we're gonna brioche knit that first stitch, what's called a bark, B-R-K. So insert into both loops and knit it, okay? That's a brioche knit, and you can tug on the yarn to tighten it up a little bit. And then for the next stitch, bring the yarn to the front and slip. So that's the repeat throughout. For the next brioche knit, leave the yarn in the front, brioche knit, yarn to the front, slip. Brioche knit or bark, yarn to the front, slip. Okay, and you're going to keep doing that all the way around. What we're essentially doing is in each row, we're going to be creating a brioche stitch and the, the other stitch will just be a regular stitch. In the following row, we'll be making the regular stitch a brioche stitch and we're going to be um, either barking or burping 
these stitches. So in this row, row one, you're always doing a bark, then the yarn forward, slip. So I'm going to keep working on this row and I'll meet you um, at the end or just before the end of this row. So now I'm near the end of row one with my main color and these last two stitches. Again, it's going to be a bark, yarn to the front, slip, and this time again, just like we did in that setup row, bring this yarn all the way over and leave it in the front. Okay, that's the end of row one. You're going to slip the stitch marker and now we work row two with the other color, the contrasting color. So take your contrasting color and for row two, you're going to slip that first stitch, take the yarn, bring it all the way around and then do a brioche purl for the next stitch, a burp. Okay, so the second row is identical really to the second setup row. So it's the same exact thing. Slip, bring the yarn all the way over and burp. And sometimes I'll do a little bit of a shortcut. I, as I slip it, I bring the yarn over. So it happens in one smooth motion and saves me just a few microseconds. Um, you can, so you can certainly try that or you could do it where you actually slip the whole stitch, then bring the yarn over and then purl it. So you're going to keep doing that all the way around. Once you get to that point, your yarn will, your, your contrasting color yarn will end up in the front and then you'll have your, um, your main color yarn, which you'll then do the same thing that we did in row one. You'll take this to the back and you'll, you'll do a bark, knit one. So row one, row two, you'll just now keep repeating row one and row two till you get, till your work measures about seven inches. Now, for most hats to be able to comfortably cover your ear, you want at least about seven inches in height before you start to do the decreases. You can certainly knit it longer if you want to, um, fold your hat and have like a, a, a watch cap type style uh, where you have a, a rolled over cuff like that. And I think that looks really pretty as well because it gives you those two color, um, the alternating colors and a nice look. So if you want to do that, then you might want to knit a couple extra inches. So maybe knit till your work measures nine inches or so, and then start the decreases. Now I've provided the link to my one color brioche video. At about 18 minutes is where the decreases portion of the hat starts. And so um, if you want to go to that video, fast forward to 18 minutes and watch from there. It'll show you exactly how to transfer your, your stitches to double pointed needles and um, work off of and start doing the decreases. So it's the pattern is identical. It's just that for each row, you're going to be alternating the color. So if the decreases tell you, you know, row one, do this, row two, do this, row one will be in the main color, row two will be in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the contrasting color. So just make sure that your work ends on a row two before you start doing the decreases and you can follow that pattern. And um, what else did I want to tell you about this? Now, when you finish your hat, it does have a little bit of a tea cozy type look, but um, if you if you roll it up or actually even if you wear it, I think it fits snugly enough um, that it doesn't, even though it looks funky like that, it's not, um, it, 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 it has a good fit to it. And then the other thing is if you do want an even snugger fit around the headband, you could do the first few rows, the first couple inches in just a regular rib, a one knit, one purl rib, and then start the, the brioche pattern. So if you do that, um, you might want to do your one knit, one purl rib in the, in the main color. And then after you've done the rib, you can do the setup row one in the main color, setup row two in the contrasting color, and then start your brioche pattern. And that might give you a, an even more snugger um, headband. So I think that's it. Once you're done with your work, you're just going to weave all the, the ends in. And um, yeah, you really, the thing is, the only thing I'll tell you is that you can kind of tell the join, as you can see here, um, this is where the, the joint stitch happens, where it doesn't quite look exactly like the the ridges on the brioche stitch, but I still think it, it looks pretty. And you really can't tell. I mean, you'd really have to, somebody would have to really watch it closely to be able to tell that, um, tell that join where that join happens. So I do hope you give this one a try. I have a few more brioche um, patterns coming up where we're going to start doing some, um, cable type stuff um, in the, or mock cable type stuff in the brioche. So I'm looking forward to, to having those videos for you. 
and just wanted to show you also that you know this might be a great way um, to to clear out some some old yarn so here I have a sample here of this this same two color brioche that I started um, knitting just just to um, try it out and practice a few things and you'll notice that I've started to change colors in here so you could have a two color brioche where you actually alternate colors um, and I think it, it gives a really cool effect, especially if you're trying to um, do some decluttering and trying to clean up some of your yarn, your old yarn or little pieces of yarn, then you can use them um, to make a multicolored hat. So I do hope you give this one a try. As always, thank you so much for watching my videos, supporting my channels, commenting on them. Um, love to hear your comments and I'll do my best to answer them if you have questions. And I've provided, again, links to my One Color Brioche video at the end here. Also some other videos um, that you might want to watch and be interested in. And again, thanks as always. Happy knitting!